Penelope's hair is so big because it's so full of secrets. I think with season one, it, it being such a huge hit, I, it's funny because when it first came out, I was like, well, no one's gonna watch it. I totally catastrophized and was like, oh God, oh God, oh God. Then it slowly started to like pop up here and there and everywhere. And then it snowballed and I was like, oh, I think this is like a phenomenon. I think this is like a major, major thing. Yeah, the, the massive debut was just kind of mind blowing for everyone. I think what I loved about coming back for season two is that everyone kind of just carried on when we left off. That being said, it was definitely a moment of like, I have to keep reminding myself that this is just, this is my job and this is, we've done it before and it's all gonna be fine and I can trust it. But um, there is sometimes I step back and go, wow, that was such a massive show. And to be a part of that is kind of very overwhelming. And then, you know, Kim K saying it was her favorite show and we're like besties on Instagram now. Kim and I, we messaged, I talked to her about going on SNL. I was like, you're gonna be great. And she was, and you know, I am. And then the SNL skits about it, it was just like, really mind blowing because I've watched that show forever and ever and be like, oh, they've seen me in something. And I mean, I could host SNL, I'm free. So I auditioned before the first season even came out, immediately from the trailer, I was obsessed. I was like, this is so colorful and beautiful and I've never seen anything like it. From that moment, I was like, I want this. I really want this. With this one, I was invested and the audition process was long and hard, so yeah. Yes, it can be quite intimidating stepping onto a set that's already been established and where everyone knows each other um, and everyone was so welcoming, but um, I think Johnny in particular really encouraged us to be the confident, talented, amazing women that we are. Simone and I's characters, we're outsiders. Um, you know, we travel to London and be a part, to be a part of the ton this season. And yeah, I think definitely we sort of channeled that newbie energy and that unknown territory vibe that we had as actors into the characters and it really helped. Last season you saw the secret reveal that Penelope's Lady Whistledown and some people online were like, no, she isn't. She is. I can safely say she is. As an actor, it's such a gift when you get those scripts and you're like, oh, I get to do this and this and this and this. It lets you really flex your muscles. It's very fun and was so much fun to do. Yeah, with this being Eloise's first season, as it were, I think it will only exacerbate how much she doesn't want to be there. If you see her alternative, it's something that she doesn't want to be a part of. She doesn't want to find a husband and dance, you know, in a part of some bizarre ritual, as Eloise describes it. I guess Eloise can find a way of doing both, and that usually means bribing a footman, sneaking out of a ball, or just ignore, <laughs> or pleasing her mother, but then doing something completely different. I, I had such a massive uh, reaction online where a lot of the fans of the books love Colin eating food. So this year I really tried, because he's in the books, he's such a foodie. So I really tried to incorporate that in this year's season. So every time we had a scene where I could potentially be eating, I'd speak to the team and say, if I have a couple of like scones or biscuits, can I have like a plateful? So it really looks like he's a hungry boy. So I'm a biscuit fiend and so is Colin. I think we share, we share, we share that. <laughs> You were eavesdropping. It was hardly an effort, seeing as you were proclaiming your many requirements for a wife loud enough for the entire party to hear. You take issue with my requirements? I take issue with any man who views women merely as chattels and breeding stock. None of that was meant for you. Viscount Bridgerton, yes. When you manage to find this paragon of virtue, whatever makes you think she will accept your suit? Are the young ladies of London truly so easily won? by a pleasing smile and absolutely nothing more? So you find my smile pleasing? I find your opinion of yourself entirely too high. Your character is as deficient as your horsemanship. I shall bid you good night. At the beginning of season two, we find Anthony desolate and he really meets his match in terms of there's a real synchronicity to his experience as being the head of a family, um, as with Kate Sharma. And so really, I think it's the greatest love story when um, he meets the person who makes him look inside. And that's what he's been needing to do for some time, I think. It was a lot of fun to play with Johnny. They begin as enemies and they're sparring off each other. But I think that transition from enemies to lovers is 
they both teach each other lessons on how to love, how to let it in, how to give love, um, and how to deal with the scary feelings that come with it all. I think there's also the love story of her and her sister. The show is about all the different types of love that you have. And I would say for Edwina and Kate, although, yeah, it is a love story, they are each other's soulmates. And, you know, I'm really close to my mum and my aunt, so I, you know, grew up in a matriarchy. So for me, it was quite natural finding those relationships in my character. Penelope and Eloise's relationship, especially in season one, it felt like the most uncomplicated love that there was, you know. And I think that's why everyone was so attached to it. It's obviously two women as well sharing their minds and their thoughts, which is beautiful. But they're getting older and they have secrets, which I don't think is a bad thing. I think you'll really see that it tests her relationships with everybody in her life. It makes things difficult for Penelope because she's also got a job to do and she needs to be in every dark corner hearing everything happen. And then she's got her best friend there, which is great, but she's attached to her hips. So how does she get away with that? And also I think she's she admires Lady Whistledown, who she believes to be this autonomous woman with loads of money, spilling gossip about loads of people all about town. I think there's something that she's sort of in love with. For desperate want of a better term, Eloise is sort of blocking Penelope for her, in her job. <laughs> oh no, I've said that on the camera. That's fine. That's a moment I can't ever undo. Being part of Penelope's is the biggest joy. And I know I say it all the time, but you know, sharing that relationship with Claudia, who I love so dearly, it's, it's a dream, genuinely, being part of that and seeing how much people connected to Penelope and Eloise as friends. It's wonderful. And at any moment in the show where all the Bridgertons are brought together is, is like supremely fun to film. But then on top of that, something that's as competitive as Pal Mal is and, and how competitive the Bridgertons are with each other. It's kind of wild. The Pal Mal scenes, I got to spend a lot of time with the cast outdoors playing this game. And we were really playing the game. That's when you start to see the competitiveness and the sportsmanship between Kate and Anthony kind of come to a head because they meet each other and they really grind each other's gears. That was really fun. What's really interesting about um, Colin and Penelope's relationship is that they are so close but so different. Um, Colin is very much in his own world. It's fun because you see her relationship with Colin has progressed in the time that you haven't seen them. He's been away traveling and they're writing to one another. Because she is a writer, she expresses herself much better that way. She's much freer than when she's in person and she feels shy. So with Colin, he sort of is starting to see more of the real her than anybody else did, even Eloise in a sense. I don't think Colin uh, looks too much into the whole gossip and Lady Whistledown. I don't think it interests him as much as it does to say Eloise. So I think that's where they kind of clash a little bit is that he doesn't understand why Eloise is so adamant on finding out because he doesn't care and she doesn't understand why he isn't driven or has any sort of uh, passions in his life as, as yet, so yeah. Gossip being like sort of the central part of it all, being the thing that spurs so many of the characters on to make life-altering decisions, sort of horrendous, isn't it? I think it shows how sort of adorably pathetic we all are, do you know what I mean? Like, we all just want, we want some sort of validation and, or escapism. Gossip in certain amounts can be lots of fun, but that's what heightens all these stakes for these characters is that they're a part of this world where if you do one thing wrong everyone's gonna know about it and it's a lot of pressure to go under especially for Kate and Anthony their whole transition of enemies to lovers is also that beauty of them finding those secret pockets where they can just let go and be themselves and I, I think that they do find that within one another so yeah I'd like to think that Kate and Anthony are both anti gossipers <laughs> But then we all do it, don't we? We do it with like social media. And so I think hearing about, you know, Lady Fistful of Mackerel or whatever the uh, fancy names will be, you know, in the shed with someone. <laughs> you know, the Queen can escape from the fact that her marriage is incredibly difficult or it can spur Anthony on to m propose to who he believes would be the most suitable diamond rather than someone he's actually in love with. 
Penelope's hair is so big because it's so full of secrets. It's like that wig, that's a wig with some bits stuck into it. There'll be times when I'll be walking along and someone's like, someone lose a curl and there'll just be a bit of Penelope on the floor. I know I feel quite weird to say being in costume with no, with no ginger hair, but and I'm not even a natural blonde too. I'm brunette, so it's just layers and layers of lies. It's terrible.